Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another tutorial for you and foam ball builds, the quick builds, and this time we're painting them. So hopefully these should be finished off and I'll be done with the foam ball build. Well, the quick build, should I say, I've still got to finish the beast. But painting these. Now obviously you're looking at this, and if you haven't seen the other videos, you're going, dude, it's grey, you've painted it. Yeah. I know it's grey, yeah. We put a layer of grey on this when we did the textured paint tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick word about painting in general, then we'll jump in and we'll we'll take it from having a base coat on it, which, to be perfectly honest, other than a couple of little points, is pretty simple. Now, before we do, I want to quick talk about brushes and paints. Okay, I'm using one inch house brush, yeah, and a couple of crafty brushes, yeah, that I picked up from you know a bargain store yeah you do need a decent sized brush for this and hobby brushes aren't going to do the job okay so get yourself a set of cheap house brushes a one inch one is fine yeah at a push rather than getting a small brush you can go for a knackered old big hobby brush okay but you know where possible use your cheapo ones mate because building terrain does wear through your, your models and your kit and that sort of stuff so uh, obviously I've got water, tissue, and then over here I've got my paints. Okay, now I'm using the same palette of colours and same paints that I've used with what you call it, with my hill builds and everything like that. So basically a dark grey, a very light grey, a medium brown, and a, a light brown. Okay, a cream, chocolate dream, coffee and chocolate dream. So creative. So what I'm going to do is show you a few simple techniques to sort of take this big grey beast, yeah, to something that's pretty cool to look on the table. Now this isn't a masterclass, yeah, this is quick and easy terrain, remember guys. Yeah, we'll cover more advanced painting techniques and styles when I do the big piece. So let's crack on. Now, obviously this has got grey already on it and this is that bog standard grey but whenever you do a base coat when after it dries you will always find when you come back to it that there are spots yeah where the emulsion didn't go in yeah and it's pretty standard whenever i do terrain i find this whether it's hills or it's buildings and so they just need to be addressed before moving on so quickly wet a brush get my coffee yeah, and I haven't got that much in there, to be truthful. So that actually works well for this tutorial, because you'll see why in a minute. Okay. Yeah, and all I'm going to do is first, yeah, just slightly dip it in the water. Now, it won't spread like acrylic paints will. It'll just sort of like take a blob of water over it. But when you start to push it down, it will start to flow into those corners. And that's all it took yeah and that's just filled in all those little gaps which are a bit of a pain in the backside to get to okay and that's just watering down a bit of emulsion paint you can use acrylics for this sort of stuff there's no reason why not this is just the palette i've got right now i'll probably use acrylics when we do the big build right so next job yeah we need to start sort of getting some highlights on this okay so open this back up and what I'm going to do is dead simple. We're going to do overbrushing. Now I need a bit of cardboard for this or something. Okay, so there's our touch of silver. Okay, and what I'm going to do is dead simple. Yeah, bit of a stirring stick. It's quite thick and gloppy. Yeah, which is fine for doing terrain, to be perfectly honest. Your paints don't have to be mixed perfectly for when you do terrain. Yeah, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that in there and give it a bit of a stir up. And all I'm trying to do is just lighten the shade just a bit. Okay, I don't want it be I don't want it to be too striking. Now normally I would pour some of the grey into a mixing pot and mix it in there, but because I've got so little of this left. 
yeah and I'm only going for one sort of shade yeah I reckon that should do it yeah I can go in that right so as you can see I've just basically taken it a shade up okay so and then I'm going to save that so when I do a load of these buildings I've got my next shade pre-mixed and what we're going to do is we're going to do overbrushing yeah now overbrushing is a bit like dry brushing okay except that you leave more paint on the brush and also this brush is a bit wet so I need because I washed it so drain the water out of that as best as I can right so what we're going to do is take the paint yeah and just brush it around till we've got no blobs left on but it's still wet okay so as you can see there's no real major blobs on there there's no splodges to go down it's thinned out on the on the brush yeah but it is wet it's not dry like you do with dry brushing and the basic idea with this is we're going to go for the central panels okay wherever it's sort of raised so all here 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 that's the basic idea we're going to try and avoid getting it into these creases okay or getting it just under there or just over there okay and that's one of the, that's one of the ways that we're going to get a natural highlight so and you can see the dry brushing streaks coming out but we're going to keep going until they sort of blend away don't worry if you get the basis you're doing it that's perfectly fine And there's a bit of a swizz around just to blend out those streaks. Yeah, it's the streaks which are the telltale giveaways to be truthful when you're doing this sort of terrain. That's where it's like, yeah, yeah, that's been a quick dry brush jobby. So what you can do is when you're over brushing, put your streaks on and give them a bit of a swizz about. Yeah. So you can see how it's coming together and we're getting that natural shadow in these corners now remember this is wet so it will it will actually dry darker okay emulsion is always brighter when it's wet so don't worry guys i know this is like oh my god what have you done to it trust trust me trust me i thought i'll get ready for another epic fail <laughs> yeah so yeah i'm going to carry on with this process all the way along and on the inside Okay, so it literally is, I'm aiming for the raised bits. Yeah, when you come back to it, just add just a tiny little bit more. Just a tiny little bit more. Yeah, and just redo these center panels. Yeah, add a little bit more onto them because that's where you want the focus to be when people look at it. Because that's what creates the shadow. Obviously, columns, big facades, that sort of stuff. And quickly, let's just quickly go over that. You've got to go over it lightly because if you smear down with this being wet, it will soak through and it will go on like a layer. So if you're going to overbrush this, do it lightly when you're doing the base. So there you have it, guys. Okay, and as you can see, it's all started to bro break up. You can't see those highlighting lights, you know, because of the way we swirled it and we blended it, it's all started blending into each other. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on with this. In the meantime, yeah, we'll skip forward and what you call it. You'll see it once it's all down. See you in a sec, guys. Right, guys, I've just finished over brushing, literally. I have, and as you can see, it sort of dries as you go with this sort of stuff. Yeah, so which is perfect because we're putting so little paint on. Yeah, and at the front, I've gone sort of full on overbrush, so you get the shadows, what you call it, sort of in these gaps. And yeah, but it's sort of got an even covering. And on the inside, what I've done is I've gone a little bit lighter for that more decrepit look. Okay, now at the minute, it is a big blob of grey, and we just need to define some of the lines just a little bit better. 
Okay, and what we're going to do for that is dry brushing, your standard dry brushing. Now, what I've got here is my touch of silver. That's quite bright. Yeah, but what I've got here is my brush that I've been over brushing with, but I haven't cleaned it. Okay, and the reason for that is I want to sort of mix on the brush. So I'm going to take a tiny bit. Yeah, that much. Now let me move this across. And I'm going to mix it on where the palette was sort of wettest with the paint that's already on my brush. Yeah, and that saves you mixing up another sort of batch. And you, remember, this is a very fine highlight. I'm not going to go crazy on this, but it's just to bring out the edges. Yeah, so because my brush has got loaded up at the minute, even though it's dry brushing, it's still loaded up at this stage. Yeah, I'll start at the top where I want it sort of highlighted the most. Yeah. And then what I'll do is just one pan. I'll show you what. Let me move that across, guys, so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and I am aiming for edges. Yeah, I'm not trying to dry brush the entire piece. Yeah, all I want is to pick out those edges. I'm going quite heavily on. Yeah. Remember, this is supposed to be a subtle highlight. You, when you do highlights on miniatures, we use quite drastic. What do, I can't even see what I'm doing. Both. When we do it on miniatures, yeah, we sort of use quite contrasting colours to bring out the detail. Now, with terrain, it's opposite. What you want is sort of subtle colours because you don't want the terrain to be overpowering. You know, you don't see details in dry brushing in normal buildings. Yeah, and what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that the very top edges and those, what you call it, those little bits of texture just get caught. Yeah, quick around the base. Yeah. And there you go. That's the dry brushing. Not striking, is it? But subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. Now we'll touch it up with a little bit more lighter in a minute, but I want to crack on and do what you call it, the other bits. So I'm going to crack on and do the other bits and I'll be back in a second. See you in a second, guys. So there you go. That is the subtle shade, the subtle dry brushing done on there. And you should see nice clean lines just on all the edges, but with no sort of visible dry brushing streaks, which is what I'm aiming for. Now on the inside, I've gone a bit rougher, so you should see some dry brushing streaks, but it's got that more of a grimy look to it. Okay, and this is all down to, you know, how much you sort of put on that over brushing layer. On the front, I went quite heavily because I wanted a smooth toad, and I just thought at the back, I'll go a little bit lighter and sort of show you the more darker, grittier look. So, what next? Well, finally, we need some real edge highlighting. Now, you can see my brush has sort of still got a bit of grey on it, but I'm just going to dip. I'm going to sort of go heavy, yeah, with that. Okay, back to my palette. And it will tone down a little with the grey, but I'm after a really light, light, light. And it's really important that you literally do get all the blobs off this because this can really ruin the look if you don't do it properly so really work that brush around get all the extra paint off and very 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 gently yeah just come along and just catch top edges I mean, literally, I'm hot. It's dangling in my hands here, guys. You know what I mean? And the whole point of this is just to give it just that fine bit of edge so you get a bit braver once more comes off. 
yeah and then very quickly just skim over the texture paint the, the texture you'll notice that none of this has sort of come off yet from where we did the what you call it the texturing with texture paint how to make texture paint yeah i'll throw a link up to it but none of it has come off They are. That's the finished grain on the front. Okay. Now I'm going to do the inside. Yeah. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'll come back. So in that a bit's done now. And at the front we've got this nice subtle looking shading, and it looks actually very, very, very realistic, although very grey. And at the back we've got the heavier version. Yeah, which is more Warhammer, grit and grime, and large dry brushing streaks that are so obvious, but we don't care because it's grit and grime. But it's very grey, isn't it? So let's get some let's get some browns on it. Okay, and so we will put our touch of silver away. And we will pull out our coffee. Okay, and obviously the idea is to dirty this up a bit. Same palette, same brush. I haven't bothered to wash this brush because I've just finished the sort of dry brushing. Uh, it's still loaded with a bit of grey, but that's fine because it'll just help with the blending. If I wash this brush out, it will make this bit a bit more challenging. Because what I want to do now is stipple. Okay, and stippling, if you haven't come across it before, it's like brushing, but it's like that, what you call it, robot out of future armour. With me stabbing. You got to stab, 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 stab. So basically, get the paint all around your brush. Broody, broody. Kill the booty. Yeah. Get all the big bobs out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start where it's going to be dirtiest. Okay. Which is essentially around the rim and the floors, the corners, that sort of thing. A little occasional swirl. Just to thicken it up. Okay, and you can see what I'm sort of doing. I'm just very subtly changing the texture on that, the colour. Okay, I know you can see like a brown streak at the bottom which goes straight across. Don't worry guys, we're going to blend that in. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on and do all the gravelly bits and all the corners. And I'll come back to you as soon as that's done. So there's the subtle basing. Yeah, the subtle browning. It's quite nice. And then, as before, yeah, I've sort of hammered the back, yeah. This was a mixture of stippling, yeah, swirling to push large areas of paint on in a smooth rotation, overbrushing, wanging your brush around, yeah, dry brushing. Yeah, now on the front, yeah, as you can see, we've done that very, very beautiful, subtle stuff at the bottom, but still grey up here. Now with just a little bit left on our brush, yeah, all I'm gonna do is just come in. And the trick is that you should barely be able to see it. Yeah, the human eye will see it. Avoid dry brushing, because you don't want all your edges brown. Yeah, but this is basically the technique. Yeah. Now, looking good, in it? Looking real good. You ready for a bit of a shock? Okay. Put a brown aside. Yeah, go back to our grey. You know, so I haven't cleaned my brush at all on any of this. And very lightly, very lightly, drag it across. Take those stones back a bit. Yeah, same in here. I'm going to go a bit rougher in here. Because it had gone OTT brown.
See, I'm not trying to get the edges with dry brush. I'm just trying to put some splodges of dirt on it. Right, final one. Okay, and this is our chocolate dream. What a colour, eh? Le chocolate. They call me Le Chocolate Mousse. What film was that from? Right. Proper dry brush, so I'll spin this over. So very gently. And I'm doing the back first because it's the heaviest. I, there's more paint on it. This is the one that was having the rough texture anyway. Yeah, so when you, you start doing this, you have quite a bit of paint on your brush. And by doing it at the back here where I wanted rougher, I could sort of use this to take the excess off. Right, that is the painting done. Okay, what? We're done already. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not lying. Yeah. And there you go, guys. Okay. That is a really smooth, dirty, realistic, what you call it, sort of front. Yeah, at the back, we've got our more classic rough looking. Yeah, and remember, the only difference between, what you call it, between the, the front and the back of this, is how much of that orig original overbrushing I did, sort of lightening it up. Yeah, I did next to none on this, and I left the dark grey underneath, and then just carried on. And the fact that I was a bit rougher, so there's more of a contrast on this side. So it doesn't really matter which like you look. Yeah, if you like the rough and ready look, then you know, go spare. You know, you want contrast between colours, so don't sort of watch call it go sort of really smooth and try and get good coverage when you're doing your overbrushing yeah leave gaps so you've got that dark contrast yeah same when you're putting your browns down hammer them down rough them out yeah so you've got thick layers and the dark layer underneath yeah if you want to go for the more realistic look yeah and no doubt i'll be weathering this up some more in the future yeah then you're looking at more graduated tones between all your pieces yeah but I think that'll look pretty good on the battlefield. More than likely, I'll do another video after this on tying it with little bits of, you know, spot work and stuff like that. But this is the quick and easy way of doing this. And it is quick and easy way, guys. So I've hoped you've liked it. Okay, obviously, if you've liked it, click the like button. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more terrain vids. That's what I do. Yeah, always, guys, comments. Always comment. Let me know if you've liked it. Let me know if you've got different ways of doing it. I'm always up for learning. If you've got any questions, fire them in the comments. Yeah, I prefer questions in the comments. Yeah, because that way when I answer them, everyone can see the answer. In the meantime, guys, uh, I'm going to crack on with Mike's Dead Zone stuff. Uh, no, I'm going to have a brew. A brew. That's what I'm going to have a do. You, it's sunny outside. I'm going to go sit in the sun. Have a brew. You have a cracking day, guys. All the best. And ta -ra.